Well, I got my swing wing mechanism pretty well finished here. I haven't ground my pins down yet, they're still sticking out. But what I've got inside my nose here is simply a dowel rod that goes laterally across the body tube. Hooked to it, of course, are two rubber bands. Uh, oh, I think they're 64 size, uh, slightly large office size rubber bands. Anyway, then I custom made some pins out of paper clips here that I embedded into the leading edge of the wing. One of the pins is essentially just a hook that goes all the way through the wing and then uh, hooks on the other side so that it can't pull out. And then these both can simply rotate back inside the body tube. Hmm. Well, that was a little bit of a delayed response. Now i got to figure out why. Anyway, that's the gist of how this is supposed to work. Let me tweak my wings a little bit, and I'll be back. So you can see here the wings flip out pretty easily as soon as you let go of them because the rubber bands are fairly strong. I don't have any way to keep them in place just yet. That'll come when I build the motor mount. So now I'm going to go ahead and bend the paper clip to make some uh, swing wing locking pins here for my motor mount. I'm going to go ahead and use a double thick paper clip. Let's see, well to do that I'm going to need my two forks, which got to be very narrow. Basically just double these right back on each other. And then I almost double this right back on itself, just because the wings center to center distance is only 5 30 seconds apart. So we'll bend that like that. Let's straighten them up a little bit. And probably need to make sure that they're the same length so that one wing doesn't try to deploy before the other one. Crimp those on down real tight. Okay. So there is my locking pin. Now that I've got my pins in place, I just need to figure out how to anchor this to this. This is designed to butt all the way up against this bulkhead. So I think the most logical way to attach it will be to bend these out at 90 degrees and stick them through holes in the side of my body tube here. We'll bend these out to 90 degrees so let's go 90 that way, 90 this way. I'm still not cutting this because I want to make sure that I have enough. Make a mark at point two. Now to find the opposite points on this, hopefully I can use my little template here again. If I can figure out how to, but we'll just align the tick mark here with our fin. I gotta put the uh, engine back in for just a second to give me something so I don't crush my wall. Otherwise, I would probably crush my little uh, engine mount tube here. I don't have the small bit that I thought I had. Let me show you a trick. <clears throat> I know I don't need most of this now. I'm going to cut this at an angle. That doesn't cut very cleanly. It leaves a really sharp edge. Let's take this out of here. Let's put in our paper clip scrap. Sharp edge facing out, of course. This Dremel chuck is a wonderful thing. You can also do wood with this. Uh, I've done it before. If you do something really thick, uh, it tends to leave a burn mark, but you can drill thin things, no problem. Watch this. One and two. Gotta put the long side in first, of course. What I'll do is use this to push this in place, and wherever this sits, will make this perfectly aligned with the pins. They don't have to be vertical, necessarily, as long as they fit inside the corrugations of the wings, and as long as they fit through these holes, we'll be fine. I'll bend these pins. It allows me to kind of help control the angle of the pins here anyway. Now's a good time to have the wings folded. That's the bulkhead making all that noise as it slides in the tube. Now hopefully those pins are in the wings. Let's try to pull the wings apart and find out. Bingo. Got it. And right in there you can see the two holes in the bulkhead. So now I'm going to run some glue right around the perimeter of that bulkhead to keep it in place. 
And right now I'm trying to find where the CG of my rocket is in flight configuration. And of course there's no electronics in here yet, but I'm using my string test. But I just thought maybe I'd want to fly it without electronics. So I need to find out if it's stable, of course, beforehand. Okay. Right there is where the CG is. I'm going to go ahead and mark that. Now I don't want to do the twirl test with this. At least not yet. I would like to do the math first, make sure that it's going to be stable before I twirl it. If, it, if the math shows it'll be stable, uh, then I'll go ahead. But I can pretty well bet, based on uh, how much area is up here versus how much is back here, that it will not be stable. The electronics will rectify that because the electronics will be up in this section here. And that'll move the CG far forward, and that'll give me more surface area aft of the CG. I'm pretty sure the CG is way too far aft. The CG ultimately needs to be up in here because when the wings are deployed, I need my uh, center of lift and everything to be up in this region. So I'm going to put my battery and my receiver and maybe even the servos up in this section. Well, that's pretty much it for now. Uh, this concludes part two. Part three, we'll go ahead. I'll put the electronics in and then we're going to test fire this thing. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.